Hi, I'm Gemma Watts and I am here today at Candela Medical's New Victorian Training and Education Centre. We are talking about the Gentle Series today with Candela's Social Ambassador, Sophie Keisha, and we're going to be talking about her journey with polycystic ovarian syndrome and laser hair removal. I know you as a businesswoman, a mother, an all-round amazing human. <laughs> But for the uninitiated, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So I am a mum of two beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. I've got Bobby, who is five and a half, and Florence, who's two and a half. Mm -hmm. And I'm the owner, co-founder of two businesses, Keisha and Fairy Magic. Just a little bit on your plate yeah. <laughs> at the moment. We're going to get a little bit deeper. Can you tell me about when you were first diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome? Yeah, so I was a teenager, um, obviously started with my menstrual cycle at around the age of 15, which mm -hmm. at the time, um, in comparison to how my body had developed as a young woman, was quite late Right. Um, in comparison to those of my friends around me. So I was 15 years old when that started, and it had never, um, I suppose it never started regularly. So it was either super heavy, super light, very irregular in terms of timing. So I could get one two times a month and then I could go six months without one. Mm -hmm. So straight away, I suppose my mum and I had concerns that something wasn't right. Um, so after a couple of years, I was 17 when I was officially diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, it was discovered that both of my ovaries were completely covered in cysts, not big enough to have surgery. Mm -hmm. I know that if they hit a certain um, diameter that they need to be removed they're at risk of bursting um, but they weren't anything like that but it, it was told to me very early that I was going to um, have trouble having children which later on we didn't want to hear no that. Well, and, and I think too at 17 years old being told that I specific specifically remember the radiologist telling me oh but you don't need to worry about that now and I think at 17 that's probably a fair statement sure. to make however as a woman I thought, well, my body's broken. You know, my body, yeah. I've just been told that my body isn't going to do what it's supposed to do mm -hmm. when the time's right. So, um, yeah, mentally it affected me a lot and there was obviously a lot of side effects that came with the um, syndrome as well. What were some of those side effects? So, like we talked about, there was the um, irregular period. Of course. Um, I started to develop excessive hair growth. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that was something that I developed quite young. So, mm -hmm. obviously... Um, you know, growing up, I grew up in a house of three sisters and, and I would have hair on my stomach and my sisters didn't have hair on their stomach and my sisters would tease me, oh, you've got a moustache, you, you know, as your beautiful yeah. sisters do. <laughs> um, I found I had very hairy arms compared to a lot of girls at school. So when I'd be sitting there in my school dress in summer, I would often wear my school jumper on a 40 degree day because I was really self-conscious about it. Um, I, like I said about my stomach, I remember I'd have boys tease me, not tease me at parties, but just be like, oh, why have you got that there when yeah. you know, girls are not supposed to have hair there? Mm -hmm. And um, something that definitely stood out to me was the growth of, um, and the rapid growth, I suppose, of the hair on my legs. So again, I'd have friends that would shave their legs, my sisters once a week, uh, but you know, my hair's basically, luxury. <laughs> yeah, it grew back by the time I got out of the shower. So, right. um, Hair growth was probably one of the main things that has affected me, um, but I suppose just the hormone imbalance as well, yeah. Um, and yeah, the painful irregular periods. I think, I don't want to use the word fortunate, but at least having sisters, mm. it's almost like you had other people around to compare yeah. your symptoms to. Yeah. I'm an only child, so okay. I, if I was, you know, experiencing these things, I didn't have anything to compare yep. it to. So if there is a woman out there who is feeling like something might be a bit off, what would your advice to them be? Um, I, I get a lot of women write to me and I never want to give out any medical advice of or course. anything. I, I can only speak about my journey, but I always refer them to go see a gynecologist from a very young mm -hmm. age. So I get a lot of women writing to me saying, I think I've got it, you know, all of your side effects, I have them too. Um, but my GP says that I'm normal and that's where I say, well, skip the GP, mm -hmm. let's get a referral straight to a gynecologist and let's have the proper testing done um, as well. Because I think there can be a lot of mis misconceptions with PCOS. Definitely. A lot of um, people I speak to are just, oh, you get really bad periods and that's what they think it is. And mm. that's totally not the case. There's so many factors that um, can come into it. You're at a higher risk of diabetes. You know, there's, there's longer term medical issues that you can face. I've had um, hypothyroidism as well, mm -hmm. which, you know, can be connected. So I always say go see a specialist. So you were diagnosed at 17. How have you managed your diagnosis since then? 
Um, well, for quite a few years, one of the first things that was hap that happened to me at 17 was we're going to put you on the pill and we're going to regulate mm -hmm. your period, and that didn't even that couldn't even regulate it at all. Right. So, um, unfortunately, I've sort of had to get used to that irregular cycle um, and the unpredictability of it as well. Uh, when it came to having children, I was incredibly blessed to fall pregnant with my first son after not ovulating or having a period for two years. Um, so I was at the stage where I was 22 and I thought I'm going to investigate this further. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually went and saw a Chinese medicine doctor who did, he didn't speak a word of English and he did acupuncture um, on my ovaries, on my feet, or well, not on my ovaries, but you know, lower, yeah. <laughs> lower abdominal region on my feet. Um, and I actually got a period the next month, which ah. is really freaky. Um, but I wanted to just start to get my body going. You know, mm -hmm. I was I was in a long term relationship. I was 22. I didn't necessarily want to have a baby then, but I wanted to know that my body, you know, I could get it back on track. And yeah, after two years, he got my cycle working, and I, I got pregnant with my son. Mm. Um, so I suppose yeah, I, I have to give credit to him somewhere yeah, in there. Thank you. And then afterwards, uh, when it came to having my second child, I did take a lot longer. Not a lot longer because I know women can take years. Some women mm. don't don't get to have children, so I'm very lucky. I'm forever grateful. It only took a few months, but I discovered throughout that that because of my um, ovarian syndrome, I actually ovulate at a completely different time to again right. the normal. So you were supposed to ovulate in the middle of your cycle. I ovulate right at the end of my cycle. So mm -hmm. when I was trying to get pregnant, I was obviously doing things on the wrong days. Mm -hmm. So again, that's where I tell women, go see a specialist who can do these tests. And so you're not, I suppose, doing what I did and, and, and you know, working so hard to try and tick every box, but yeah. you're actually so far off the mark. Such important advice. Mm -hmm. You've touched on how rapidly your hair was growing, mm -hmm. particularly as a teenager. Yep. Did that remain the case into your 20s? Yeah, absolutely, and, mm -hmm. and still does. So still, um, and if anything, after my babies, it probably got worse as well. Mm -hmm. As yeah, I'm sure we're all aware, like your hormones go bananas when yeah, you are pregnant. Yeah, putting it lightly. And even postpartum as well, they continually go up and down and it takes quite a long time for your body to come back, you know, to centre. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, laser hair removal is something that mm. I've had to really up after my babies yes. as well. Um, because I have grown hair in different parts of my body that I never had hair even before. Let's talk about laser hair removal. Mm -hmm. When did you start to get laser yeah. hair removal? Um, I probably started in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. So um, like we talked about, my leg hair, my face hair, stomach hair was always something that I tried to wax. Yeah. Um, I actually gave up very early trying to wax my legs because they were so hairy that the time that I needed them to grow back and the length I needed them to mm -hmm. grow back in order to wax, it was just not something I could you know, possibly yeah. do. As a young woman, I was playing a lot of sport. Um, and for me personally, I didn't want to be doing those things with like five centimeter black thick yes. hairs on my legs. So I had to shave them all the time, but um, waxing my, um, Brazilian and bikini mm. area and face was something I had to do and it's just with waxing it's like every they say mm. every four weeks but for me it was probably every three weeks and wasn't financially a good idea it's so expensive so expensive extremely painful and just I suppose running out of time to you know it's, mm. it's every couple of weeks you have to book these appointments and go all the time so um yeah and then my friends actually got me onto laser and instantly mm. I saw an incredible change amazing um not only in how fast it would grow back, but the density of it, you know, the, the coarseness of my hair was probably the biggest thing mm -hmm. um, that made me fall in love with laser. And even, yeah, I'm now 29 and I'm still having it. The, the amount that I'm having it is less, the areas I'm having it are less, and mm -hmm. my hair overall is much less as well. Let's talk a little bit more about those results. Mm -hmm. So you found there was a change immediately, which is yep. great. Talk to me about the process of those yep. early laser sessions yep. and how long it took for you to get to yep. a point where you thought, we're onto something here. Well, like I said, the first time, I remember I had my legs done the first time and um, and just to not have that, after, because obviously you have to shave yeah. um, before you have laser and to not have that instant prickly, Mm -hmm. you know, regrowth within 24 to 48 hours, I thought, I was almost like, what's happened to my body? Yeah. You know, and then to physically see these black dark hairs falling out or I would exfoliate and they would all be on the loofah mm -hmm. was so exciting because I thought, well, it's Been responding. <laughs> and Yeah, and something's happening here. Um, and then to, to wait six to eight weeks mm. to need it again was just 
something I could never have comprehended yeah. um, before. And then, I, like I said, I knew I was onto a winner and I knew that I was onto something life-changing with that. And to some it might sound a bit, you know, it's just hair, but it's not just hair when, well, for me, suffering PCOS, it was... It was really affecting my mentality and my life. And like I said, I was a young woman. I was wanting to go out and go to the beach with my friends. And, and I hated summer. Everyone loves summer. And I hated summer <laughs> because that meant bearing my skin mm. and having to prepare my skin to go out or to wear shorts or to go to the beach. Mm. So um, instantly life-changing. It's a real confidence thing, I think. Yeah, and absolutely. as you said, it might seem a little bit surface, but I'm yeah. definitely the same in that after I've had laser, your confidence is through yeah, the roof. Yeah, absolutely. Just to have that reassurance that, um, and again, it, you know, it, it borders on sounding almost vain, but it, it does but go But it's just confidence. a personal thing. Yeah, it does go back to confidence and being a, a young woman and, and wanting to, yeah, go out and, and you do, you compare yourself to your friends of around course. you. And there was always that one friend that was like, oh, don't, I haven't shaved my legs mm. in three weeks and they'd have no hair we on their legs. We all know her. Yeah, we all know her. <laughs> Um, and for me, like I said, I'd be that person who got out of the shower and her hair was growing back already. So, and I did, I actually did get teased quite a lot when mm -hmm. I was younger. Um, you know, yeah, if I, if I hadn't waxed my lip or, yeah. like I said, you have to, with waxing, you have to physically wait till it grows back to a certain it's length. A so, um, I did, I, I, and I was, I was absolutely by far the hairiest girl. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say. I was the hairiest girl in my family. I was the hairiest girl at my school. And um, it's probably not a nice name to give yourself. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so life-changing and um, I suppose, like I said, being a young woman and just being able to do all of those things with that confidence. Mm. Um, yeah. I think that's the biggest takeaway. Yeah. Let's talk about the Gentle Series. How have you found those treatments to be? Yeah, well, I, I was undertaking laser when I was younger. Um, with other machines at mm -hmm. other companies, you know, I was getting my coupons or my Groupons, whatever, yeah. whatever they were We've called. We've all been there. And I found there was such a variety of machines. There were some that were really painful. There were some that were not painful at all, but they didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was just going around a lot. And when I started working with Candela Medical to find the Gentle Series was one that was so effective, um, mm -hmm. so instantly effective, uh, but also had that pain-free factor to it. Yeah. Like, it's just it's a no-brainer. No -brainer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think with laser, there comes a lot of... The most prominent question I get asked is, well, does it really hurt? And obviously, at times, it obviously depends in your cycle where you are. Of course. This is me personally. Um, you know, what, what I've been doing. Um, I think different areas of my body. There's, you're going to feel yeah. different things in different places. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, the, the pain-free factor and the efficiency of it and how fast and... You can have it done. Like I'm, I'm getting my whole body done now. Um, heaven. Yeah. And Absolutely as a busy woman, and, and we talked about busy woman working. As you know, I've got two kids. I don't mm. have you know hours to sit in a salon and have laser. No. Yeah. I mean, even women that aren't that busy don't yeah, have that exactly time anymore. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So we know that undergoing laser hair removal with Candela Medical has worked for you. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend it to your friends? Yeah, absolutely. And I have. I've got so many people on Amazing. it. I'm actually annoying my friends a little bit too much to tell them. <laughs> um, you know, I'm like, go on the stockers list and see, you know. They're we'll like, we're already there. doing yeah. it. <laughs> but um, it's been great to share that with my followers as well mm. and just speak openly and honestly about my experience with it. And I love that I can share that on my post, but I also get a lot of people writing to me anonymously or writing to me, hey, can you not share this with anyone? It's really personal. And we talk about our journeys together. Mm. So it's been really beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story with That's us. Okay. We really thank appreciate you for it. Me.